Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are joined once again by Latasha Henry, the founder of Empowerment Journey, hailing from West Olive, Michigan. She's helping so many, and really her company, Empowerment Journey, is all about giving you that uh, safe place, right? A lot of us have mental angst, anxiety, depression, and she's offering a lot of coaching, especially those who suffered from a lot of childhood trauma. And uh, really, we're going to discuss today, of course, some of the benefits of working with someone like this and how she can help empower you to be the best you can, you can be. How does that sound? <laughs> Perfect. Thank Aww. you so much. Thank um, you. Tell so- us yep, a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, so um, I am a certified life coach. I specialize um, with trauma, different areas like that. Um, I'm a mom, a wife, um, podcaster, and founder of Empowerment Journey and Empowering You. And um, yeah, I just want to touch base a little bit today on childhood trauma. Um, That seems to be a lot of um, things I see my clients, you know, trying to still work through. Um, a lot of people don't realize how severe or how much childhood trauma really does affect you in your daily life. Mm-hmm. And if you, you know, if you don't allow yourself the time to heal, it's going to continue and it's going to get, you know, signs are going to start coming through in different ways. And then you're not going to understand like why you're getting frustrated about certain things or, you know, maybe why a certain yeah. word upset you. I'm not sure, Jill, if you've experienced anything like that or maybe have witnessed it, but people don't realize, you know, how talking to other people or responding to other people really sheds light sometimes on some things that that has happened to you because you haven't been able to heal yet. Uh, Absolutely. Look, I've had childhood trauma. I'm very open about it. I remember it. I'm very vocal about it. And I feel I know that it has affected me in my adult life. Um, if you don't mind me just sharing, I mean, I grew up in a house where I had two parents. They were married, but they should not have been married. It was constant fighting, anguish, chaos, blasting the radio so I didn't have to hear them fighting. My mother being the physical one, my dad being the verbal one, but I understand what drove her to be that way. Cops always there fighting at the guidance counselor's office, stressing out, but, you know, we we got through it, unfortunately, and they never got divorced, and unfortunately, my mom passed away seven, seven years ago now, and it's ironic how he's changed. At 74, he's like a different man. My sister's living with him, and he's actually nice now. Which it's like so sad we say, well, it took one to die for this to be over, but it's not over. Um, You know, I didn't trust men. I still don't trust men. Um, I have a fear that um, I'm going to get hurt. I don't ever want to be talked to the way my dad talked to my mom, the verbal abuse and the, she, you know, he, he, but she wasn't allowed to drive, wasn't allowed to have friends. And it was very severe, right? And then he had a drug problem on top of it all. So as a kid, you're trying to go to school, go to work, try to, and it was just very difficult, right? So now fast forward, I'm 46 and I've had quite a few relationships. And ironically, I end up dating the same type of man, like the jealous type. And I feel like it's my father. How did this happen? I'm I don't deal with jealous men. I, and so long story short, that's why I made the decision to have my first child all by myself. I said, I couldn't like, it just, I could do this. I'm like, I don't trust anyone. So I have my own issues, you know, just to let you know, you're not alone. You shared your story here. And I know a lot of people are out there listening and it's okay. We all have something, right? Yes. Thank you so much for for opening up and sharing that. Um, Not just with me, but with your audience as well. I, I truly appreciate that. And I'm glad to see you know, you thriving and being strong um, and being that voice that a lot of us need. So thank you. Yeah. So Um, it's not easy. I am a single mom, still can't find Mr. Right, but I've actually just given up on, I'm not even looking for it. And because now I have my two little boys that I have that I'm happy with. And if that comes along one day, great, but I don't need it. I just thought growing up, like you needed a husband, you need to have a certain life. It has to be like this. And now You learn that part of it, and then you also put your defense mechanisms up, and then you, like, I really feel like I'm okay with it. I grasp what happened as a child, and it's over, and it's okay, but, and I'm okay with it now, but people still say, well, you may have problems from it, and I'm like, you think? I don't have time to think about my problems. I got two kids to raise, so, (laughs) but yeah, you know. (laughs) Yes, that is so true, and that's where, 
um, you know, a lot of people had children younger, like I did. Um, and then, you know, later I had another one, but so now that they have more time to themselves, they're able to reflect and they're able to start feeling things differently and they're able to actually set in what happened as a child. Um, and so that's when they start like, um, emotions, like going through the emotions and different things like that. And so, um, that is a huge, a huge thing for people. And, you know, being a single mom is very, very hard and you just don't have time to, to sit and think about things, right? Like you're just, yeah. you're just on the move, you know, you're working, you are doing doctor's appointments, you are, you know, doing sports, whatever it is that the kids are doing. So you're just very well consumed and busy with life and being that mom. Um, and I, you know, I know from my own personal experience, um, being a single mom, it was so rough for me because I never wanted my children to ever experience some of the things that I experienced. Yeah. So going to people's houses or allowing people to interact with my children or having them go to a daycare center, you know, like just giving them or uh, giving anyone an, a chance to be around my child without me was extremely hard. And so, you know, I, I have had multiple conversations with my children when they were younger, you know, um, don't, don't do this. Don't let this happen. Don't, you know, like go through like the protective things. But I realized one day when I was at the, the doctors with my child and the doctor, you know, it was a female doctor and, you know, she's trying to just like do her, her checkup as for school, you know, so nothing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. But my daughter was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to touch me. Don't touch me. You're not my mom. You, you know what I mean? And so I realized then yeah. my own issues that I was trying to deal with, I pushed off onto my kids to the point that I made them just afraid for anyone to touch them. You know what I mean? Like even for, like a good, a good reason, like a doctor. Right. So that's when I was like, okay, you know, I gotta, I gotta pull it back some. And, and that sometimes is what it takes for people to realize that what they're doing is because of something that happened when they were younger and how it's filtering into their life daily now. So true. Wow. And by the way, how old are your kids again? Remind me. I know one's yeah. mm -hmm. one is 20 um, in nursing school. And then I have one that is 19 who is um, a certified mechanic. Um, and then I have a six-year-old who just graduated kindergarten. <laughs> Yay. Oh my gosh. You had graduation recently? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's so funny. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they sing you the songs and stuff. We did that last year. My little guy is in first grade. So, but I love the kindergarten graduation. Yes. Yeah. It was so sad, you know, and uh, on a side note, it's weird for me because I went through that with, with my okay. middle child, right? Thinking this is my last one, you know, and I went through all those emotions and then now here I am doing it again. I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, congratulations on that, by the way. They, oh, I love it. Oh, nothing like a, the joy of a little child. As hard as it is to be a parent, the, that joy. Oh my God, I feel it for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 that is also, I mean, things that, that we- No. Um, Go ahead. Sir. Oh, sorry. No, have you protected your younger ones? Have they had any childhood trauma? I mean, we try right now because we've had childhood trauma. How, yeah. you know, how do you protect your own kids? I mean, we're all going to do something wrong, but like, have you mm -hmm. made a conscious effort? I'm assuming, right, to change things. Because the first time around, right, was when you had the older. That's when you were having some of those problems too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, my older two, um, especially my daughter, she, you know, both my kids were very close to me, but my daughter, you know, unfortunately um, would hear me in my moments of crying, right? Like, you know, most of us moms, especially single moms, find the shower our like safe spot to like release or, you know, to like let and, out those emotions. And then you hear, Ma, Ma, and I'm like, no, I just yeah. wanted to, I can't even shave my legs. I just wanted to take a bath. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is so true. And, you know, I have, I have one that would just come in, you know, and the other one would just sit outside the door and wait while talking, you know, and I'm like, okay. So, you know, my daughter, um, unfortunately would see me in moments, you know, that I was trying to always not have them see me in. Um, and, you know, so I would share with her at an appropriate age, you know, like some of the things that I went through and why I was so pushy on making sure don't let anyone, you know, touch you. I don't care if they want to play a game and you never keep secrets from mommy, you know, so she was more aware of my past. Um, my middle one, he he knows a little bit, but he 
you know, I haven't sat down and like shared everything because yes, he does need to know, but I feel like my daughter needed to know more to be aware more because it's not a safe world out there, right? Like just because someone is claiming to be a friend or a family member or, you know, something like that, like that's, that doesn't mean that they are safe. So um, yeah, my baby, if you ask my children, they, they tell me I'm very lenient with him, <laughs> but I'm still very, very protective of who um, gets to be around him. You know, like it's, it's either I know you or I don't know you and you gotta be, you know, someone that I, I know, like, wholeheartedly is not going to do anything, you know, to my baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing for those that, you know, um, haven't got to know you yet. And I know we are talking about childhood trauma. I just want to remind everyone who we're talking to and all forms of contact and then we'll continue. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So um, again, my name is Latasha Henry. Um, I am a certified life coach and I specialize, uh, you know, with trauma. Um, and I um, am with Wealth, uh, Wealthy Woman Entrepreneurs Network. That's where my podcast will be. You can also find me on Empowering You 3, which is TikTok. And that's where the show right now is every Wednesday at three. Uh, you can also go to my website, latashahenry.com. Don't space Latasha and Henry. It's got to be together. Um, and, you know, schedule an appointment, set up a free consultation. We have a six to eight week program that we offer. We also offer just one on one coaching for those that aren't really ready to do a program. So we got different things that we can assist you with um, yeah. and help you to live a happier, healthier life. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right. So what else did you want to address today about childhood trauma? Those out there who may not even realize they've have it or they do you know how, how do we work through it what are some of the benefits to uh you know getting over that and working with someone like yourself yeah so um i i know a lot of uh, my clients have not shared their experience with anyone um not even like um their husbands or their children you know so this is something that they have been living with their entire life so um being able to have that conversation with people because uh, you need to have a support team, right? And that's a lot of the reason why people don't talk because they don't feel like they have a support team or they don't feel like people will believe them and, you know, they'll judge them and think less of them. So, you know, reaching out and just finding someone as, you know, me um, to find that support, to give you that confidence, to have that conversation, because no matter what, even if you don't realize it is affecting your health, right? It is affecting your health. And, and I, I just want everyone to be a lot happier and healthier and to know that they're loved. And, you know, that's what we work through in the, in the program. You know, we have tools, um, different techniques um, that we go through. Um, just an example, this is one of my notebooks that my clients get and we work through this, um, you know, to build the confidence back up and, and to my clients and teach them skills um, and teach them how to deal with um, their anxiety or, you know, maybe having a panic attack because of what someone has said. So that way they can deal with things better. And again, having that conversation, just knowing that it is okay um, and you are safe. And that's where empowering you comes in because so many people don't know that others are suffering from trauma, right? And and they need a safe spot to share that. So they come on Empowering You and they let their family members know that, hey, I'm going to be on this show, so watch here, yeah. right? Um, and it opens that door. Like, it opens it up and it, you know, starts that conversation. And then I'm there to help them with their family, you know, work through, you know, all of the feelings and all of that stuff. So just just being able to to realize that, you know, the mental health stigma and opening the conversation with it because it's not like you're not worthy you are you are loved and you are cared for and there is a place for you to go and and share and get the support that you need mm -hmm. beautiful i love hearing that thank you um did you want to talk about some specifics people that you've helped some you know stories clients or uh, what else did you have in mind just asking no no, no i mean uh for me sorry sudi Oh, I said, oh, don't want to interrupt. I'm just joking. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, you know, for me, just um, getting messages from people who watch the show or know a friend who has been through my program and they were inspired by that or they were inspired by the transformation that they saw them, you know, go through while being in my program is very rewarding. Um, and being that 
that light and being that um, person that they feel safe enough to come to and, and talk to um, is, you know, why, why I do this. Like, I just know that, you know, I have a client um, who her husband didn't know, didn't know. And so she came on my show to have that, but she was able to have a conversation with me. Like I was her best friend, you know, and she was able to lay out all of everything that happened and, you know, and then tell me why she didn't, want to tell her husband right um and so that was a, an experience that i'll never forget but it was also you know rewarding to know that she was able to finally be relieved of holding that secret right like um some people who have childhood trauma are told that they can't tell anyone it's a secret you know um that gets put into their head at a younger age right and you know if you tell you know no one's gonna believe you or no one's gonna like you right and so as a child and you grow up believing that then that's just a secret that you keep you keep dark hidden in you so to be able to you know be safe and feel safe enough for someone to finally release and want to get to a better place is just a really um good thing to see and i love watching the transformations take place with my clients hmm. i love it i love it i love it and just to go through the process of it how many days, how many months, what normally is like the commitment, you know, for someone to change these patterns to get over, you know, these, these traumas. Yeah. So, you know, everyone is um, at a different spot in their journey. And I have my free consultation call because that is where we'll go over things and we will decide, okay, you are here at this spot and you're going to need, you know, six weeks or you're going to need eight weeks. Um, and you're going to, you know, the program is what's going to be more fitting for you. And then there's other ones who are still trying to accept, right? Accept that what they went through when they were younger does affect them, even if they're trying to like keep it and not let it affect them. In some way it does. So we will just start with one-on-one -on -one coaching um, three days a week and um, for an hour. So, and then once you start doing the coaching and you start opening up a little bit more and you start realizing, oh, that, that is true, I do that, or, you know, um, then we'll move you into a program. And most of the time, my clients are able to finish the program within eight to nine weeks, depending on, again, where they are in their journey. And then most of them still want to do coaching. Like, they don't want to just, like, do the program and be done. <laughs> They're like, can, can we still, like, talk? Like, I still need, I still need, you know, that that reinforcement. I still need this guidance to do this. And, and of course, but, you know, depending on, again, how many times that they think they're going to need the reinforcement will depend. But I always make sure I tailor everything towards my client and their needs. Beautiful. And, um, you know, you've been doing this for how long now? Um, I have opened my business um, for about a year um, and doing coaching and different things because I used to work in public safety law enforcement. So I've been doing this kind of stuff for about 12 years. Beautiful. And um, clearly you're passionate uh, about this work that you're doing and you're able to work with anyone all over, right? There's no restrictions in your state? Correct. Yeah. Um, I have made it so I can go worldwide. Um, I didn't want to be just in one location because I, I realized that there is a need everywhere. Um, and so that's why I also do my calls, even with clients that are close to me. I do them on Zoom. Um, so that way, two, three weeks down the road, we can go back and we can look at where they were and they can see how much they have grown, which is very rewarding for them to watch that happen. Mm, love it. Thank you for sharing. All right. And, uh, you know, we still have more time today to talk. And um, I love hearing, you know, client experiences and, you know, the work you're doing. And, um, you know, has there ever been a time, a challenge, like a challenging case that you've had where it didn't work as quick as you thought or, you know, right? Because everybody's body, mind, different, right? Um, and how do you suggest, you know, p coaching? Um, when do you realize or when do people know whether they should be seeing a coach in a sense or a mental health professional? Can you just share that difference as well? Yes. And thank you. That is a very good question. Um, so as a coach, I've, my job is to focus on moving you forward, right? So if you are at a spot and you are just struggling and you're like, I don't know, I don't know why I'm struggling or I don't know what's happening or why am I feeling this way, right? So that is, as a coach, that is my job to help you 
move forward and get over obstacles and and those those kind of things where a therapist a psychiatrist them they focus on the past right so what they want to do is they want to take you from from your past and bring you to the now yep. okay so, so they help um they help you with all that and if someone is not facing has not faced their past or hasn't grown to a certain spot in their past, I cannot help them because they're not going to be able to move forward with me until they're able to deal with what happened to them when they were younger or, or you know, at a different age. So that is the, the biggest difference between um, having a certified life coach or having a therapist or a psychiatrist is the focus of now and the focus of younger to get you to now. Got it. Thank you for that. Um, yes. What other traumas are people dealing with, um, you know, from childhood? Yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, there there's a lot of abuse, sexual abuse. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, watching your parents struggle, um, you know, physically, you know, domestic violence, that type of stuff. Uh, it's, it's very... Um, interesting when I hear people say, well, I didn't really have any trauma or I didn't have a hard life, but I, I'm not sure why doing things like this is hard for me, or I don't know why hearing this is, you know, difficult. So when we are in a session and I'm trying to talk to them and, ha you know, because I have them write down things that maybe triggers them, you know, in the moment so I can try to understand it better. So as I'm talking to them and we're working through it, it's, it's very um, interesting to hear well, yeah, you know, my mom and, and my dad, you know, had a lot of issues, but it didn't affect me. Like I, I was fine. You know, I was going to school. I didn't, I didn't do anything to me. Right. Um, but they don't realize that maybe because they constantly heard their dad screaming and putting down their mom and saying horrible things about the mom, how that affects them, you know, with their own um, identity with their own way of believing that they're confident and they're good. And, and, you know, they're one of those people that can be strong. So, um, just, just working through that with people for them to realize, you know, maybe you felt in the time that that wasn't affecting you, but now you're, you're hearing it and you're seeing it and you're dealing with it now and you're realizing, Oh, okay. That does make sense. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of things that people, um, finally realize along the way that they did actually, you know, have a hard time with. Got it. All right. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, gosh, the joy that this brings right to you, um, you know, helping someone, it's got to feel good. And speaking of feeling good, how are you feeling? I remember you have a knee injury from what, was that did. two weeks ago, three weeks ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah. I had knee surgery. Um, and other than, you know, me getting the strength to walk a lot, I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. So thank you so much for asking. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness. Any yeah. plans for the weekend? What do you have going on? Uh, so here, you know, I'm struggling a little bit because my baby, um, for the first time is going to be away from me, um, on vacation. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's going to be 10 days. So it's a very long time, but he is with his grandma, uh, you know, and his aunts and uncles. So I know he's fine. It's just, you know, that first time is, is rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you poor thing. I get it. I get it. I could. Oh my God, the trauma. Oh, I wish you luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's fun. So, you know, uh, it's it's good that he's going to be out and, you know, down in Oklahoma having fun. It's just, you know, for me, that's, that's a long time. No, oh, that is, but I think you'll get through it. You'll be okay. But ah, uh, thinking about it, oh my goodness! And thank yeah. God for today for the the FaceTimes and the the social media, the apps and stuff like that. Yeah, and you know when he was leaving, I was like, okay, like I'm going over everything with him and making sure he's packed everything. And he goes, he runs in and gets his book bag and he comes back out and he goes, hey, I'm going to take this because it has a picture of me and my teacher. And if I start missing her, I can just look at this picture. And I was like. Yeah, that's right, buddy. I was like, but what about mommy? Like, oh, what about me? That's, oh. <laughs> he was like, oh, I can call you. Okay, yeah, you call mommy. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Well, thank you so much. Best of luck with this, and thank you for being here. And if someone wants to reach out uh, for that consult, would you mind sharing one more time how we do so? Oh, yeah, no. Um, you can reach out um, through going to my website, latashahenry.com, no space. Yeah, you can reach me at Wealthy Woman Entrepreneurs Network. Yep. Um, the show is empowering you three 
right now, which is on TikTok. So you can follow me there or on Facebook, Latasha Henry. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day and an even better weekend, Mom. Bye bye. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat, aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing, I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know, know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat, or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.